Hello everybody and welcome to the second part of the MT Connect adapter series. In this video we will be covering the flow of information in MT Connect and building out a simple adapter using the TrackHound library in C Sharp. Without further ado, let's get to it. Before we get started, if you haven't watched the previous video in this series, I highly recommend doing so. In that video, we cover how to install and configure the MT Connect agent for your machine. You will need to have an agent set up and configured to be able to use the adapter that we will be creating in this video. You can watch the previous video by clicking on the card in the top right corner of this video. For those of you who already have everything set up, let's get started. Now that we've installed and configured the agent, let's walk through the flow of information in MT Connect. We will start with an adapter that gets information from your machine. The adapter will send that information out on port 7878 to the agent. The agent will then convert that information into MT Connect standard format and output it over the network on port 5000. A client application can then read that information by connecting to port 5000. It will be our job to get that information from our machine to be sent to the agent. Once we get the information in our program, we will use the TrackHound mtconnect.net library to perform the necessary connections and data conversions to send the information to the agent in a format that the agent understands. This format is called the SHDR protocol. Here's an example of the structure of the SHDR output of the adapter. The first part of the string is the date time. Each time your adapter sends information to the agent, it will contain a timestamp. Next is the name of the attribute being sent. In this case, it is mode, followed by the value, auto. Then comes the next attribute and value. We have status as the attribute and running as the current value of the status attribute. In Visual Studio, I have created a console application project using .NET Framework and named it trackhound underscore demo one. I have created the FANUC, CNC alarms, CNC programs, and CNC system classes which will be getting the information from my FANUC control. You will need to use the appropriate library to connect to your control type and get the information from it. If you have a FANUC control and you need information on using the FANUC Focus API to communicate with the controller, you can watch my FANUC Focus tutorial series by clicking on the link in the card at the top of this video. For this example, it is not necessary to use actual information obtained from the controller if you are unable to obtain it just yet. You can simply hard code some information in, and that will work just fine for getting a simple adapter up and running. You can worry about communication with the controller later. The first thing we will need to do is install the proper NuGet packages. Go ahead and open up your NuGet package manager and search for TrackHound. In this list, you should see mtconnect.net-shdr. We are going to click on the down arrow next to this item, and it will bring up a confirmation window. It simply tells us that there are dependencies that will be installed along with this package. Click OK and let it install. In the program.cs file, I am going to start by creating a private static shdr adapter object. I will call it underscore adapter. I will also create an instance of my FANUC class that will be used to get information from the controller. As part of the FANUC code, I will also create a uShort and call it underscore handle. I will need this for communication with the controller. In the main function, I am going to assign my underscore adapter variable by calling the shdr adapter constructor. If you remember from the previous video, there is a section in the device XML that allows you to specify a name or unique ID. When calling the shdr adapter, you can either pass in the name or the unique ID from the device XML, or you can simply not pass in anything. I'm going to pass in the name of the adapter here. In my case, the name is FANUC-CNC. The next call is going to be the adapter's start method. This is going to take care of starting the communication with the agent. There isn't much more to it. I am also going to add a thread.sleep call and sleep for 5 seconds. I have found that if you start sending information to the agent before the communication has been successfully started, then the agent won't get the initial values for each data item. This will cause a lot of stuff to show unavailable in the output, even if it isn't. Next, I'm going to create a function that is going to take care of updating all the values. I will make it private and static and call it update data items. It will take zero arguments. I will write a message out to the console telling the user that we are updating the values. Then I will call the adapter instances add data item method. 
The add data item method does a couple of different things depending on the state of the adapter. If the adapter is just starting and we haven't added the data item yet, it is going to create that data item inside the adapter. Otherwise, it is going to update the value for that specific data item. Let's take a look at an example. The data item method takes two arguments. The first is the data item ID. This is simply a string that we will use to refer to the specific data item. Next is the data item value. If we look at the first data item we are adding, we can see that it is the program data item. The first time I call add data item and send in the data item ID program, it will create that data item inside the adapter. Every time we call the method after that with program as the data item ID, it will reference that data item and update the value. In this example, I have created data items for the X, Y, and Z axes, the emergency stop state, the running program name and comment, as well as the current mode and status. This matches the FANUC device XML that we looked at in the previous video. Before we continue on, if this video is helpful to you, strike that like button to help spread this video to a wider audience. If you like my content, consider subscribing to my channel for more tutorials and CNC related content. In the previous video, we covered the device's XML and talked about the different data item types available to you. We covered events, samples, and conditions. The emptyconnect.net library takes care of the event and sample types for us, so we don't need to worry about them. However, if you want to add conditions, we need to use another method, which we will see once we are finished with this function. The last thing we will do in this function is call the sendChanged method. The sendChanged method looks at every data item we have created, and if the data item has changed since the last time sendChanged was called, it will send the new value out to the agent. The sendChange method only sends the values that have changed. This saves on network traffic since you aren't sending out every value every couple of seconds. Next, I'm going to create a new private static function and call it update conditions. The first thing I will do in this function is grab the alarms from the controller. I will then create a new list that contains the shdr condition class. The shdr condition class allows us to specify information that is specific to conditions. If you remember from the previous video, condition data items hold information about the health of the machine. This means a condition allows you to show warnings, faults, and normal operation modes. Back in the code, I am going to initialize 10 new shdr condition objects inside the list and pass in a string that can be used to reference the conditions that I specified in the device's XML. These will represent the 10 alarms I can read from the FANUC controller. Next, I am going to create a for loop and iterate over all the conditions in the condition list. If any one of the alarms is not in an active alarm state, the alarm text will simply contain an empty string. So, inside the loop, I will check to see if the alarm from the active alarms list is empty or null. If it is, I will set that condition to normal by calling the shdr conditions normal method, which indicates there is no warning or fault on the machine. Otherwise, if the string is not empty, I am going to call the fault method. The fault method takes four arguments. The first argument is going to be the fault text. Next is the fault code. We then have the severity of the fault. I put error, but you could specify something else such as critical or information. The last argument is going to be the condition qualifier. Basically, this says whether the fault is high, low, or not specified. The last thing to do in this function is call the setConditions method on our adapter object. This will do the same thing sendChange does for the event and sample data items in the previous function. I am going to create one last function and call it agentConnected. In this function, I am going to initialize my FANUC instance and connect to the controller. I am going to then write the adapter port we are connected to out to the console. Next, I will create an infinite loop. Inside the loop, I am going to call our update data items and update conditions functions, and then I am going to do a thread.sleep and sleep for one second before calling it again. You may want to use a timer instead of a loop, but because of the way the FANUC communications work, and to keep this example simple, I'm going to use a loop in this instance. This is going to update all of the values every second. You can change the timing to match your needs. I happen to think one second is good for most people, but you can make it longer or shorter depending on what feels right to you. One last thing we need to do before we run our program is go back up to the main function and add a function call for agent connected. As you can see, there isn't a whole lot to the adapter. The mtconnect.net library makes it super simple to get an adapter up and running. 
There are more advanced concepts such as assets that we will get into in a future video, but for now, you should be able to get a relatively good MT Connect adapter up and running with just the three basic data item types that I've shown in this video. Now we can run our adapter. When we run this, it is going to start a connection to the agent. Every time we read information from the machine, it is going to take the information that has changed since the last time it was sent and convert it into the SHDR format that we saw earlier. The data points will then be sent to the agent on port 7878, where it will undergo another conversion to XML format and finally be sent over the network for any MT Connect client to read. As you can see, the information on the page has updated to values set by the adapter. If I trigger an alarm, we can see that it changes from normal to fault and the alarm information is displayed for us. We can also see that if I change the mode on the machine, the mode is updated. Feel free to play around with this and have fun. Figure out what specific information you need for your environment and let me know what you come up with. Thanks for watching. Until next time.